Welcome back to my channel. I have a different video today. It's not a book review um, exactly. I am talking about a book and the movie adaptation that comes out next week. Um, and that is for Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. I did not like this book um, for one particular reason, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Later I am going to be getting into spoilers for the book, so if you did want to see the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, uh, I'll say when I'm going to start talking about spoilers, and you can watch till then, but if you've read it or if you don't really care, then keep watching. So this novel is about a girl who has a disease called Severe Combined Immunodeficiency, um, which essentially makes her, like, allergic to everything. She's confined to her house, she's not allowed to go outside, and anyone who comes in has to be sterilized, and she really only has contact with her mother and her nurse, for the most part. Um, she has video conferences with teachers sometimes, but apart from that, she really doesn't have much contact with anyone. There were some good things about the book, including the main character being racially diverse, and while that particular aspect of her character was treated with respect, the way the author handled this disease was not not with the same level of respect, and it is an issue that can be avoided. A while ago I wrote a more in-depth um, post on my blog, um, which I will link below. Um, so I'm going to be going over most of the same points in this video, but if you want to read my thoughts on it as well, then I'll, you can just click on the link in the description. I'm going to start getting into spoilers now. I have to speak about the end of the book, so if you don't want to know the end, you won't really be able to watch. But otherwise, keep watching. The ending of this book frustrates me so much. What ends up happening is a boy moves in next door, and she ends up falling for him, and um, starts to break all of these rules that she always had in place, such as letting him come visit her and uh, kissing him, even though it's dangerous because of her disease. And eventually she kind of just says, I'm sick of this. I have to take a risk. She goes to Hawaii with Ollie, the boy, gets sick, has to come home, but because she saw a different doctor there, the big reveal is that she doesn't actually have this disease. Um, her mother was traumatized after her dad and brother got killed in a car crash and um, she just wasn't right after that and didn't want to lose Maddie too and created this whole story that she had this disease so she had to keep her close to her. And anyways, she doesn't have the disease and then um, other than maybe getting sick more than the usual person, Maddie can now go and live her life like a regular person. <sighs> okay. First of all, it's such a lazy way to end the book because there's no development for the character. She doesn't have the chance to try to overcome the obstacles and figure out a way around everything and grow from her experiences. The problem just disappears. And there's such an issue with this. It's essentially putting the idea out there that someone can't live fully with a disability and that is so far from the truth, and it is such a dangerous idea to put into a book. It's a YA book, so it's very accessible, so many people are going to read it. It's gotten popular, especially because of the movie, and it's just gotten all this buzz, and I know people love it, and on the surface I can see why. It's a very cute story about a romance between Bali and Maddie, but that's just not enough. And this is something I really care about. Um, I was skeptical going into this book in the first place, and I always am with books that deal with allergies. Even though this is different than my situation, it still is a type of allergy, and I, I personally have about 25 different food allergies, which is a lot to deal with. But the thing is, is that I do deal with it, and I've figured out how I can deal with it and work through it best. I've grown up with my allergies. I was diagnosed when I was about six months old, and I've lived with them for my entire life, but I don't let it stop me from doing what I want to do, so 
For instance, I love baking, so I have learned how to adapt recipes and bake safely. Um, and I bake and I cook all the time, and it's my favorite thing. For instance, in the book, Maddie wants to be an architect, and there's one scene where she speaks about if I were to, I think she says, if I were to be anything, I would have been an architect. She talks about it so wistfully, as if it was this dream that she had, but because of her disability, because of this disease that she has, there's no possible way for it to become reality. I'm sure that it would have been a huge obstacle to overcome, and such a hard thing to work through, but she could still try. She, there's still, the author could have developed it more and had scenes in this book where um, despite not being able to leave the house, she figured out maybe a way to work um, electronically and become an architect, become what she wants to be. But instead, she is isolated and cut off from everyone. And even that seems strange to me. She's isolated from the whole world despite being able to visit with some people and being able to have these video calls with her professors. There must be ways for her to meet people online and make friends and have video chats with them, but none of that happens. She's just isolated from the world, uh, which further shows that when she has the disability, she's different and she can't fit in. The tagline on this book is the greatest risk is not taking one. Even this is problematic to me because yes, it's good to take risks, but you have to know your limits. For me, I'm allergic to milk. I wouldn't go out and eat something that has milk in it because I've never had it and I'm sick of being so limited in my food options. And while I do feel that way, quite often, I know the consequences of eating um, maybe a piece of cake that's made with milk. If I did eat that, I would end up in hospital and it could be fatal, which is the stakes that she had. There was so much potential in this book for her to have this disease legitimately and work through it and grow from it and learn from these obstacles. And there was barely any time in the book where she took charge of it in a way that wasn't blatantly dangerous and grew and created new opportunities for herself, such as with the architecture. If a child with a disability, any disability, were to read this book, they could start to think that it's okay to take dangerous risks, or because of their disability, they will not be able to live their lives to the fullest. And I just think it is a very dangerous message for this book to send. And now it's going to be turned into a movie where so many more people are going to consume it. And if you enjoyed the book and you liked it for what it was, um, for the romance and the characters, then that's perfectly fine and you can go out and enjoy the movie which looks like it'll be a nice faithful adaptation of it. I have seen the trailer. I don't think I'll be watching the movie though. Um, I'm not saying to completely boycott it. I'm just saying that it's important to not be a passive consumer and to look at it more critically and to see what the consequences could be of of this story. There are other stories that deal with this kind of thing in a much better way. I don't think I've read a huge number of books with characters who have disabilities in them, and if you have any suggestions of good ones, I would love to read them, so leave the suggestions in the comments. Um, but a couple that I have read that are dealt with in better ways um, are, first of all, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I didn't love the book, and I have a review of it that I'll link below, but the one part of it that was quite good was that Kath, the main character, had anxiety. And throughout the book, she succumbed to it and she really struggled with it. By the end, she started to work through it. 
and she wasn't completely free of the anxiety, which is perfectly fine. Um, I struggle with it as well, and it's not something that just disappears overnight, but she started to understand that she can't let it take hold of her life. So, for instance, she was at university and she was ready to give up. It was too much for her, which I totally understand, especially after this year. But she decided she is going to stick it through and she is going to try to make it better for herself and easier for herself. And the other book is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. In this book, all of the characters live in the oasis. They live through the oasis. But by the end, when uh, the protagonist meets the friends he's made online, they had issues they were dealing with. And they also, by the end of the book, they started to accept them and started to become more confident and more comfortable with who they were. And that's the kind of message that a book should be showing. And that is what I would love to see more of in YA. That's all I have to say for now. Um, if you are interested in the blog post, it'll be linked below. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you will watch the movie a bit more cautiously. Um, if you have any thoughts on it, I'd love to hear what you have to say. It, I think it's a very interesting topic and I'd love to talk about it. Um, so that's all and I will see you next time. Bye.